Welcome back to the next topic. Now three weeks after the two-week hashtag NSAT's protest against police brutality turned violent across the country, leading to mass destruction of public facilities and the killing of policemen, plus burning police stations and massive looting of COVID-19 palliatives. The Senate President, Hamad Lawan, has warned that Africa's most populous country may be plunging into another season of unrest if unemployment lingers among its dominantly youthful population. The Senate president gave the warning as he formally declared open the 2021 budget defense for the Ministry of Agriculture on Monday. To discuss this, we have an author and a social commentator, Abraham Onoja. Good evening, Abraham Onoja. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me today. And joining us, we also have uh, a social commentator, still another social commentator, Jide Benson. Good evening, Jide Benson. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Okay, maybe by law of first mention, let me start with Abraham Onoja. Uh, you just listened to the Senate President, if you haven't heard about what he said. Now, he has hinted that there lies another protest if the issue of unemployment is not given utmost priority. What do you make out of that statement? And what I will make out of it is this is something that they, everyone is aware. This is something that we all know. Over time, we have had instances where these people come on board and then make politics out of the situation. Unemployment is not something that we will need to start talking about again. Rather, having programs, policies that should tackle unemployment head on. I mean, I didn't believe that at this point in time, in 2020, we'll still be grappling with some of these issues today. So, in other words, what I am saying in a nutshell is unemployment has always been something that almost everybody who comes into government used as a cash cow to always, by way of sympathy, get the people, the people's buying. Now, to further portray this again, what are the plans, programs, policies put in place to address this issue? You have a Senate president who is saying NSAS protesters will be back on the streets and you're having 2021 budget being discussed. I want to categorically, I, I want to hear the part that says, oh, they are making room for human capital development. They are making room, I mean, uh, ASO are still on strike up till today. Doctors are going on strike. Almost everyone is going on strike by the news I saw today. So is that the kind of country or economy or politics that is supposed to turn the unemployment ratio to, un to employment in the same country. Okay. Except I am actually missing out something. But okay. otherwise, I feel a lot needs to be done or a lot has to be done by these people to actually nip these things in the board. Okay. Abraham, uh, that was a fantastic uh, opening remark. We'll come back to you. Uh, probably we might need to do a check. Uh, maybe either of you has the uh, AC or the fan on, if you can put it off so that we don't have that uh, disturbing feedback that we are getting. But Chidi Benson, let's look at that statement holistically. Let's look at the messenger. Let's look at the message. Let's look at the contest. Let's look at when the budget was put together. It was definitely prior to the NSAT's protest and overall implication of what that statement stands to uh, mean. Well, um, I appreciate the fact that the Senate President has said this. It means that um, he appreciates the fact that the National Assembly ex escaped by the, whisker, by the whiskers the wrath of the NSAT protesters. Mm. Now, when I say wrath, I say that very carefully and because it was, it was a peaceful protest, but they made attempts to get to the National Assembly, but the National Assembly enjoyed the privilege of hallowed chamber. They got military protection, and so that prevented the NSAS protest from getting to the doorstep of the National Assembly. 
And when the thing assumed a, another dimension, a dimension of violence, yeah, you can, the records show that some senators, some, some lawmakers had their properties vandalized, whether at the state or at the national level. And if and because the end SARS protest is on has been is unprecedented, we haven't had anything like that in decades. I mean, you can only think about that. Think you can only think about end SARS protest along the lines of the pre-colonial protest, the Abba women's riots, the June 12 struggle, and the efforts to get the military out of government. Now, this is a generation that did not witness any of those. And on their part, they were able to muster themselves together and get about 120 million tweets. I was listening to an analysis earlier today. And SARS alone generated about 120 million tweets. So now they have been repressed by the bullets and boots of the military. And you can be sure that there's some defiance growing somewhere. They are meeting. They are not just meeting physically. And so when the next wave is going to happen, the National Assembly will not escape it. However, if they take necessary measures, as the Senate president has recommended, they may be spared. So it's important uh, Gide, that the Gide Senate Benson, president does Gide not just mouth Gide this, Benson, let me, but let that me the jump in here. hits the road running. Or let me, when let the me rubber jump hits in the road, people Gide, start can to you see hear me? a lot of um, uh, changes me, taking place. Jide, sorry, I, I will quickly have to jump in here so that we avoid any form of ambiguity. Because when you say uh, uh, National Assembly will not be spared, um, that sounds, for some people, what exactly do you mean? Are you, are you envisaging another form of uh, violent protest which has been condemned by the original NSAS protesters? Because it's important that we disambiguate some of these expressions. Don't you think so? Okay, um, I do not preach violence and I do not in any way incite. Don't forget that one of the things that NSAS protest has revealed is that there are two categories of youth. Youth one, the enlightened and the informed, and youth two, the uninformed, the hungry. And those are the ones that have often been cannon folders in the hands of politicians. Those are the ones that where people are now referring to as hoodlums. But don't forget that they are hoodlums because they are tools in the hands of the political elite, the political class. And if there's anything that the NSAS protest um, made them realize is that they are nothing in the hands of these people. They are the ones who embarked on the looting and the vandalism and the, what you call it, the opening of warehouses where you had palliatives. So that alone is enough to enrage them. So whilst they may not take their um, grievances to the doorstep of the National Assembly, they know where these people live. Okay, I, I, I take it that uh, your message is clear enough, but beyond that, we would not subscribe the Plus TV Africa will not subscribe to any form of violence or any form of incitement, just to put the record straight. But your message is well driven home. Let me quickly go back to Abraham. Abraham, let's look at um, the import of that statement. I, I wish we could play a sound bite sometime ago. I saw it on social media. When a former senator, you know, once a senator is forever a senator, I'm talking of Senator Ben Murray Bruce, when he said on the floor, of the red chamber that if we do not attend to this army of youth one day they will come at us we will have nowhere to move around so i guess that's what gd is also pointing out but how do we take this statement very carefully do we need to do another rewriting of the budget so that we you know we we, we budget more on youth development on job employment and some other things that a problem must have changed the equation. So um, thank you very much for that question. Um, we might not even need to impute or have to add more figures to what we have there. There is a bill that hasn't been passed. That is Human Capital Development Framework. We talked about three things, actually. It talks about health, it talks about education, and the labor force. So let me speak clear, carefully about the labor force. The labor force is the segment, segment that talks about entrepreneurship, that talks about farming, it even still talks about education. It talks about quite a lot of things for the young people, for the working class and those who want to delve into uh, uh, small, medium-scale enterprises amongst the host of that. If you have a government 
a government or a people or a legislative arm that bothers so much about what the youth ha are, are, are craving for or want. The first and most important thing is to have passed that bill, is to have made sure that that bill today is ready to be implemented. But where is the bill today? It's nowhere to be found. If they are talking about um, um, NSAS protesters hitting the, the streets again, these NSAS protesters for the enlightened world, just like my colleague here said, is the fact that you have the enlightened ones. There are those who actually went to school. There are those who are working. There are those who are doing one thing or the other today. But that trade, where is it in the scheme of things? I, I might be privileged enough to be sitting down somewhere in an office. But how about the millions who are out there who are unemployed, who probably even have the degree, but cannot find jobs, or you don't even have the, the, the right infrastructure to support entrepreneurship? Early, uh, earlier today, I was having a conversation, and I was told that, oh, wow, if you go to some places, for instance, like Niger State, for instance, they produce the farm rice. But they can't even get this farm, this produce to uh, the metropolis, let alone exporting it. These are uh, 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 largely young people who engage in this trade. But how well are they even supported? How well do they have access to, for instance, fertilizers, amongst a host of other things that should also boost employment in the society? So the moment you begin to look at some of these things, you look at it from the bigger picture of things, which is where I talk about uh, infrastructure also. I mean, where are we with power today? We have dams. What is the output? Okay. We have gas plants also. What hey, is Abraham. the output today? So if you want to look at... I, I'm excited you already given solution and to just put it on record that when we hear of uh, Hensa's protest is a generic term now. It has gone beyond uh, police brutality because as far as this set of people and what the president of the Senate uh, alluded to, he's talking about unemployment and I'm happy we're providing solution. Uh, G.D. Benson, I want to give you a kind of hydra-headed question. And it has to do with the fact that I know you relate with some politicians closely and uh, you can as well pass as a politician. I saw a situation where the protesters at the time were not going to have an end. They were not going to have a clear court where we should stop. They want every problem in this country resolved on the street that moment. So if you were to speak to them, if you were to be a leader, how do you reach out to them? How do you tell them that these step one, step two, step three, wait for step four in 2021, wait for step five in 2022? How exactly is the way forward? Um, sadly, the president missed an opportunity to, to warm up to the youth. Apart from ending and apart from dissolving SARS for the fourth time, emphasis on the fourth time, because disbandment, dissolution, um, banning of SARS had become an annual ritual since 2017. And if you if you remember on Sunday when the the, the IG of police that on Sunday October 10 or October 11 when the Inspector General of Police announced that the president had ordered the dissolution of um, the federal SARS, the people, ec were, the people rejoiced for a moment until news filter that that had happened three times before that. And then the five for five um, what request came out. I think what the presidency should have done or what the leadership of the country should have done was to immediately begin the process of ensuring that all the victims of SARS got justice. Already we can see that already there's an indication that the that the panels that have been set up by re respective state governments, that other things are happening to counter the efforts to douse the tension when you have accounts being frozen. So if I were to, if I were to advise the government, not the youth, I mean, the youth, the youth played a very fast one on the government by deciding not to have leaders. If I were to advise the government, it would have been to, to have gotten to the middle point, three out of five would have been a fair point to start asking the people to stop the protest. And then this is the very people whose accounts are now being frozen. Clearly they've been identified as arrowheads. 
and they could have they could have started talking to them one after the other but again the president still has an opportunity to right the wrongs because NSAS was just a spark it wasn't the real issue because the police themselves are victims. So NSAS was something that was going to benefit the police ultimately. If there was any institution or organization that was going to be the single largest beneficiary of the protest, it would have been Nigerian police. Hmm. Thank you so much. I, I think uh, that, that drives home the message. So, um, Abraham, please, you have 60 seconds. Uh, can you finish your thought before we interjected you on the way forward? Abraham, are you still there? Hello? Yes, I am here. Uh, yeah, ending uh, end SARS I, protest was not just about ending SARS. It was about go bad government. It was about demanding accountability, transparency in the way we do things in this country. If you have a government that is working, or a people that are concerned about the welfare of the entire citizenry, like you rightly said, three out of five wouldn't have been a problem at all, or dialoguing with these people at the end of the day, because they have their, their, their grievances are actually legitimate. So, Having to go back to start freezing people's accounts is actually out of it. Left to me, what I'll tell the government is actually to tackle these issues head on. It's not just about ending SARS, but ending bad governance in the country and demand for accountability. Because if you have good governance, you won't have a police officer telling you, I will shoot you and nothing will happen. Hmm. And you would actually do it and nothing will happen. He has superiors, he has okay. people who call him to order or sanction him, but nothing is done at the end of the day. In fact, recently I just saw on the news where I was, uh, I saw that the attorney general was saying that there's not enough um, evidence to prosecute about 30 something SAS officials amongst the host of others with the overwhelming information we all saw. Away from that, you need a government that is accountable, that needs, that, that wants to meet the demands of the people. Okay. Or, like we're talking about employment, see how they can get more young people engaged meaningfully, not just with uh, white collar jobs, but entrepreneurship as well, okay. or a boost farming amongst a host of other things that we can use to get quite a lot of the youth off the street. Okay, Abraham. That's my humble opinion or what I'll do. And it's a lovely opinion. Community. And it is a lovely opinion. Gide Benson, since I didn't tell you that was your last take, maybe you can do that in 20 seconds, please. Add to some of the things you've said in your closing remark. It's good that the Senate President has made these comments um, while discussing the issue of the budget of the Ministry of Agriculture. Once upon a time, agriculture was the mainstay of the Nigerian economy before we discovered oil, and oil appears to have been a curse. So I hope that this is not just mouthing this because I am almost certain that the people who have been repressed by the shootings at the Lekki toll gates uh, are not going to, are not going to let, it, let this go just like that. So it's important that every arm of government sees that there's an opportunity on, on this to begin to right the wrongs that have been meted out okay. to the populace for a long time. Once again, thank you, Gidi Benson, a social commentator, and uh, Hebram uh, Onoja, an author, and also a social commentator, for your insights. We appreciate. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, and uh, to our viewers, we will take a short breather, and when we return, I will be giving you my take. Please, don't go anywhere. Here is my take. Irrespective of who is saying it on and how it's been said, the message, according to the president, is loud and clear. Let no one play politics with these. We are sitting on a keg of gunpowder, which is the army of unemployed youths. Sad enough, the great percentage of this demography, unfortunately, are graduates from different tertiary institutions. What are their grouses? They are not far-fetched. They want to see a system that promotes merits and not mediocrity, nor nepotism. They want to see a system that guarantees a good and sustainable job. 
They want to see a system that does not celebrate ill-gotten wealth. They want to see a system that de-emphasizes wastage in cost, in, in, in cost of governance. More importantly, they want to see a system that does not inhibit their creativity. Maybe by then, the thought of another unrest will perish in their mind. And that's my take on tonight. Plus, politics returns tomorrow, same time. I remain yours truly. Kayode, Ladende, saying bye for now.